everyone. My name is Becky Hornbeck and I'm the social studies teacher here at Learning Options. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself as we get started. Um, my husband and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this past August. Uh, we have two sons. Ethan is 21. Aiden is 17 and a senior in high school this year at Waterford Kettering. And we also have a dog named Chewy who just turned five. Um, a little bit more about myself is that I went to Michigan State for my undergrad and I have degrees in political science and international studies. I also did my teaching certification program through Michigan State. I went on then to get my master's in education from Oakland University. Um, I started teaching in Lake Orion in 2000, so I am starting my 24th year, not only in Lake Orion schools, but specifically here at Learning Options. This is my 24th year at Learning Options High School. If you ever need to get in touch with me, the easiest way to do that is going to be by using that email address right there. I will always do my best to respond to you within 24 hours, hopefully sooner. Um, on the right, you see the social studies graduation requirements for learning options. Um, students are required to take a full credit of world history, a full credit of US history, a half a credit of government, and a half a credit of economics. Currently, I'm teaching government and economics. I also wanted to make sure to let you know how your student will be graded in my social studies classes. Um, we do daily assignments that are turned in for grade every day pretty much. And those daily assignments could be notes, reading, discussion, uh, videos, small writing assignments, anything we basically do on a daily basis in here is gonna fall under this category. And that is gonna make up 40% of their grade. Tests are gonna make up another 40% of their grade. And finally, we will have a final exam that will make up 20% of their grade. I am always willing to work with kids who um, have some anxiety about test taking. So if you have a student who is an anxious test taker, be sure to tell them to reach out to me before we take our first test and we'll figure out if we can give them an alternative setting or something like that that will help make them feel less anxious about taking a test. Same with their final exam. One of the things that is going to be the um, best way for them to be successful in my class is to be in class every day. I know it sounds silly, but the kids that show up here every day are generally the kids that do the best. Um, I don't give homework which is another reason it's really important to be here every day. But I do understand that sometimes people are absent. Um, just make sure your student knows that if they're gonna miss a class, it's their responsibility to come see me to get what they missed. I mentioned earlier that the two classes that I'm currently teaching are government and economics. The government curriculum was just redone for this school year. And so one of the things we're doing um, are focusing on learning targets and big ideas. So we're currently, our learning target or our big idea is, is a federal presidential republic the best form of government? So everything we're currently doing in class is going to help your student to answer that question. And then you see units two through seven, who has the power, what branch of the government has the most power, are we a superpower, um, those are just a few of the big ideas that we'll be talking about this semester in government class. Economics, um, we also have a lot of learning targets and big ideas, and they generally fall under these categories. Right now, we're just kind of learning what is economics, what are the terms and the big ideas we need to know to understand economics. We're going to talk about making choices. We're going to talk about the different economic systems. What is the role of government in economics in the United States and around the world? We're gonna do a big unit on supply and demand. We're gonna talk about US economic policies 
And then hopefully, if we have enough time, we'll talk a little bit about the importance of international trade. I wanted to end today with a few basic classroom rules and expectations. I expect my students to be respectful to each other and to me and appropriate while they're in my class. This means in general, they should not be on their phones at all during class unless I'm having them research something for the actual class. They shouldn't be texting, playing games, watching videos, and I kind of put this on them to make this decision for themselves, right? My expectation is, is that they keep their phones put away. Students who struggle in my class, it's usually because they're also struggling with staying off their phones. It's so easy to get distracted by them. That's why I tell them, put it away. You don't even need to be looking at it right now. I also make sure I tell my students to let me know if you're ever lost or confused. It's hard for me to help them if I don't know that they're struggling. And if they don't wanna come right up and say it to me, they can always send me a message in Teams or send me an email. My overall goal is for your student to be able to answer and understand the learning targets that I mentioned earlier. Because of this, I do accept late work for each unit, right? I want them to do the work. I want them to understand what they need to know. But once we take that unit test and it's time to move on, I will no longer accept missing work unless there's some sort of crazy extenuating circumstance. And I always tell my students the easiest way to be successful is to come to school, pay attention, and do your work. I hope to meet you later on this year at parent-teacher conferences.